Hello there, and welcome to the Tuesday Show. It's a special edition. It's an explosive edition. It's got me in on this in the big, big chair. So, trying to do the proper thing. Welcome to the Tuesday Show and all that like. It's Tuesday the 30th of September. It's autumn, and it's getting a little bit cold. Conquer time. I found my first Conquer today, and uh, it's got to say it's autumn, hasn't it, really? So hopefully if anyone's got another Conquer out there, they can maybe have a little game with me later on. But we've got a rate show tonight. We haven't got any live stuff, technically. We've got some pre-recorded live stuff. We'll come into that in a moment. We've got stuff like Leon. We've got a little bit of, mm, mm, Skimboat in there as well. There's some Tom Atta and some celebrity jamming down at the Skimboat HQ. So I had a bit in a party last week, and this is the whole reason why I'm here, because I've got loads of footage to show you. And I just thought it'd be so unfair. I come out of time and space, and I got rid of uh, Matt and Roger, because they were getting a bit power mad with all this chair. Like, in fact, Roger's off filming his own series, 80 Days Around the World with Rog. Hopefully we'll catch that at some point. Matt is still trying to grow a decent beard, but Ben, he can be quite troublesome, so I locked him away in my TARDIS for a little bit. Might be able to let him out later and see if we've got my camera still set up in there, but it's lovely and peaceful here in studio. So, I'd like to get straight on with the show and show you something interesting from last Friday. So it's Leon O'Doherty doing a Bond cover and it's Nobody Does It Better. So if upstairs would care to roll my VT, do enjoy, back in a while. Nobody does it better. Is it sad for the rest? Nobody does it half as good as you. Baby, you're the best. I wasn't looking, but somehow you found me. I tried to hide from you. above me this vibe love me is keeping all my secrets safe tonight nobody does it better though sometimes I wish someone could Nobody does it quite as good as you, baby you're the best, whenever you hold me, the way that you hold me, there's some kind of magic inside you, it keeps me from running, just keep it coming How'd you learn to do the things you do? Nobody does better I thought you were all singing <laughs> Makes me feel Mesmer. sad for the living <laughs> <laughs> That was lovely, wasn't it? That was Leon and a little bit of drunken singing in the background. But with that song, baby, you'd be, you just can't resist a bit of the old club singing. Uh, I've got a little bit more on that in a bit. Um, but yeah, just, um, wow, well, that was lovely, that. A bit, a bit of Leon doing his nice thing. Um, oh, yeah, and um, we're here on GTV. If you've just joined us live, we're here on the Tuesday Club. I'm calling it the Tuesday Club now because it's like a big club where you know we all want you to come join us. So, 
on about that sort of stuff, come in and join in us, Tuesday show at bview.tv. It's an email thing. Whatever you use, type it in and that. We're also on the old MySpadge slash bview. And we're on Facebook as well. Have a search for us there. We're trying to get out there now because um, we love this show and we hope you like it in a form anyway. So, um, to bring you some more familiar faces from this, I'm, I'm quite curious. Um, I did lock Ben away in Mitardi, so I want to check on him and see what's happening. So, um, can I just uh, bring up Ben there, please? Um, is, he, is he there? Is he there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, thanks for that, Glenn. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Actually, they were saying that it's not so bad here, really. It's interesting, you know what I mean? Lots of levers to pull, knobs to push, you know? Oh, Little buttons to play with. <laughs> ah, what are you going to do? You gave me the TARDIS, I can do what I want with it. It's brilliant. Actually, well, it's, it's a bit, you know, it's kind of confined. It's not actually as big inside as you think, you know, you know, just roomy, spacious, all that stuff. But anyway, anyway, I'm here on my own. I've been like beamed and satellited and, and generally fiddled with. And now I'm stuck in the TARDIS due to Glenn, the power mad crazy man who's just like, you know, you know, she's taking my seat. I mean, you know, I mean, let's be honest, don't I? I look better with all that stuff, you know. But anyway, he thinks he's the man. He thinks he can pull it off. He can do a show. Well, let's see. Watch him crash and burn. That's what I say man bye bye yeah but actually i'm gonna it's good because um i don't have any mat you know because he's just i don't know he doesn't have any so like, je ne sais quoi you know and raj is fun sometimes you know when he can actually be bothered to talk but um he's not here either because they're just a load of space cadets they're wasters they don't have the commitment they don't have the time they keep working and i keep telling them this you know what i mean you want to give up your job give up your wife give up your whole world Come watch a Tuesday show. Or failing that, phone us up, we'll get you on camera. How's that sound? I mean it, baby. Beep, beep, bleep, beep, beep, bleep, beep. Right, go back to him then. All that crazy guy, if, I bre if he breaks anything there, who knows who's gonna fix it? There's only one or two Time Lords left in this world, and I'm one of them when it works. Oh no, I broke, I, I broke it. It's, it's, the summer happening in there. He's, he's sat doing a sci-fi mashup in my TARDIS like. So, thing is, I just want to uh, turn to this camera, like that, and go, uh, here's some of GTV. Oh, I'm really enjoying this GTV business. <laughs> it's, it's the Tuesday Club. It's the Tuesday Club. I mean, the Tuesday show. Um, but on GTV, on, on my little bit. Sorry, it's Glenn Entertainment, isn't it? God, I've gone power mad. That's all in the past now. I've got my own show. <laughs> so, uh, thing is, in Glen Entertainment Land, I usually, I'm usually picking the nose of Barzy music scene and wiping it on your back when you're not looking. Well, so here's a bit of a spooky gig listing for this week and some hot venue gossip. So coming up, previously, bit of that. Coming up, bit of something else. So coming up this week in particular, Tuesday's now pretty dull, BMX of <coughs> cancelled that. So look out for bigger, bigger BMX kind of gigs happening. Wednesday, not really much happening either. But Thursday night, there's a bomb night at the Pulse Bar and there's Lo-Fi Lung and Rock Melon. That should be really interesting. And then Friday, there's Bang the Drums at the Archers. Now, uh, this week, there's the Harringtons and the Stray Targets on. But for a little bit of venue gossip, it's true, the rumours are out there now that the Archers has been sold to the people who own Funny Gals and they might be turning it into something not an originally kind of venue. So. I don't know whether I'll be still going there and doing stuff. Hopefully be there this Friday, because I need the cash. I really do. So um, that's Arrington's and Straight Target this week at the Archers. I'll let you know, I think there's one or two more weeks left before <coughs> no more gigs there. So where do we go? There's the Pulse Bar, there's the Isaacs, uh, number seven downstairs. There's rumours that Burn Down the Disco might be moving to the Lacorum as well, so I'm hopefully off there. So that'll really bring up the class of the footage, but lower the quality of the sound. Um, Sunday, Isaacs bands, Sunday, Monday usually at Isaacs. Monday, folk off. I said folk at the Shore Inn. Uh, folk on. Folk off. Folk on. Folk off. Um, so, and then it's all the way back round to Tuesday Club <laughs> with me and Ben. We've actually killed Matt and Rog and we're just taking over. We're just, play, we're just playing around. Hopefully coming soon is the whole new drinking episode where we taste some wine and eat some pies. So um, yeah, that's about it from the gig listing part of this show of mine, GTV. <laughs> uh, and then so back and forth in time in this GTV special, I want to now show you my little bit of footage 
from the Friday. So it's a good whopping five minutes. So we're all gonna have a pie and a fag while we wait this out. But there's some footage, more footage of Leon, more drunken singing along. There's a bit of skimboat doing a cheeky cover, bit of the lovely Tom Atter bluesing it up with the skimboat drummer, and then touches of bits of jams as well. So uh, hope you enjoy this bit of footage. It was Ian James's birthday. He's our keyboard noise making guy out of skimboat. So um, roll my VT, have a bit of this pie. Hello there, and good evening. And welcome to something a little bit different tonight. Hi, you just caught me doing some editing, and it's my birthday. Yes, yes. I do hope you enjoy some of the uh, craziness that goes off tonight and through the magic of television, here's what happened. Oh, no. Alright, no, no, no. alright, Leon's going on. East to the west she lights up my day
Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? A bit of Skimbo HQ there, also a rehearsal room and a recording studio. Reasonable prices, do find us on the old Tinter web like, uh, and we might record you in that. So, I, we had a great cracking time that night. A uh, little bit more in a moment. Um, back to our needing news. Um, we've now got the cultural awareness team, but seeing as I'd locked Ben in the TARDIS, I think he has been flipping around in time and space. So he's uh, apparently, I think he's maybe somewhere in India, the Taj Mahal, not the restaurant, the venue. So um, over to Ben and let's see what cultural awareness he's got for us this week. Hello, hello. I'm coming to you today from the Taj Mahal, which is actually, I'm going the wrong way on the TV, but you see, it's actually, you see, that's it there, look, Taj Mahal, it's really beautiful, should come, it's really hot though, but the food is just gorgeous. So anyway, I thought, you know, instead of doing the news thing, what we do is we just go and fly around and do different places and maybe go to San Fran, I don't know, somewhere, but I'll find out next week where I am, doesn't really matter, who cares, but <laughs> it is hot. So, on with the news. Look at that. See, John, it is that way. Right. This is my first story, which is it's a kind of a sad one, actually, although it's not written. Ah, this is the one. Um, it's about an elephant that got killed by a bus. It's kind of an you know, elephant. So cute. Killed. Kind of sad. In Mexico, escaped from a circus or something. Uh, of course, ran across the road. Bus hit it. Luckily, also killed the bus driver. So condolences to the family, but, you know, you shouldn't have been driving so fast. And don't run over elephants, because you'll die. So, next story. That way. Ah, yes. We're working. We're getting there. We're no, that's still the wrong story. Hang on, it's so unconfused. I mean, it's just, you know, it's the heat. It's addling my brain. No, that's just scribbling. That's some more scribbling. Here we go. Here's the paper. Yeah. So anyway, excellent story. We love it. And they're going to now produce ice cream that's made out of human breast milk. How exciting is that? I mean, all you lovely perverts today are going, yeah! Woohoo! Yeah, breast milk ice cream. Will it be shaped like a tit? Well, probably. At least if I was making it, I definitely would. But that rings into a question, another kind of point. I mean, where does the breast milk come from? We know it comes from a woman, but what kind of woman? I mean, if she's like, you know, ugly and fat and has got tits the size of my head and she's actually 50, then would you really want to drink it? On the other hand, if she was actually a supermodel, even though they got like really tiny boobs and you probably wouldn't get much milk, but I'm sure it tastes a lot better, you know? Even just the knowledge that it came from a supermodel, you know? I mean, if you have sex with a woman, if she's more beautiful, the sex is better. It's just the rule, you know what I mean? So I think the breast milk thing would probably come under that. But anyway, um, they, they sent it off to um, Ben and Jerry's, you know? Yeah, there's a nice family, homely company. And they said, well, actually, no, we're not going to do that because uh, cow's milk is really, you know, nutritious, even though, like, you'd think breast milk would probably be pretty nutritious as well. You know, keep up the autoimmune system and stuff. But anyway, they're not going to do it. So I think I should do it and maybe make my own company. You know, and ironically, Taj Mahal, bit like a human boob. Who knows? So, um, on to the next story. Oh, boy, by the way, before we go to the next story, don't put the, don't put the picture up, not yet, right? Okay. Uh, I just want to say, I'd really like to try it. Okay, next story. Um, let's see if we can find it now. Somewhere, you know. Oh, there we go. Wait, my mic's come undone. Um, yes, this is just the cutest thing ever. It's just like, you know, tiger cubs get rejected by the poor mother because, you know, whatever. I don't know. And um, so <laughs> they get adopted by a pig. And there's the picture of them there. If you look very closely, you can see them actually suckling on the pig, which is just like kind of cute. A little bit weird, but, you know, I mean, ah, tiger cubs. So cute, furry, and little faces on them. Suckling on a pig, which admittedly are not that cute of an animal, but... Anyway, so you see, life goes on, life survives. Another animal story, very happy. We started with the sad, sad elephant, poor elephant dead. But now we finish with, yay, tiger cubs, pigs, tiger cubs, wee pigs. So that's about all I've got because I've only got three stories because um, stupid Mike, will you sit where you're supposed to? God, jeez, I don't know. Some people are so unprofessional. Anyway, I'm going to finish now and I'm going to fly off somewhere else and I'm never going to come back. Bye bye. Ah, there we go. Bringing you the news, the blues, and some boobs. Always with Ben, hopefully back in a bit. So, um, in this fun packed show of live footage and kind of stuff, I'm now going to bring you to the crescendo peak. Well, not really, it's just a bit of footage of the old skin boats. It's a bit of the jam in the middle, so it's quite funny, bear with it. Um, it goes on, um, but it were all good fun. So, here's skin boat, skin boot even, Das Skin Boot and the German heavy metal tribute band doing Got Milk in the Lockup. Take it away, Roll VT.
that was big fun sexy time wasn't it got milk from the skin boat album the adventures of time ship still available in bargain buckets everywhere still under a fiver if you catch us quick the whole album's right there in your face so moving swiftly on to so we've got a bit more bouncing about to do but we've only got a few minutes to do it in so here's over to ben q he knows what to do there you are. I'm back again. He keeps moving on. You see, I've I, I, I don't understand why, really. I mean, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I don't even have anything to say. So instead, what I'll do is I'll tell you about this thing because you see, a couple of weeks ago, the more observant and eagle-eyed among you might have noticed that um, I mentioned that I got mugged once and I was going to tell you the story about it, but uh, we ran out of time, so I'll tell you now. It's an excellent story. Actually, it's really funny. You wouldn't think so. You know, mugging, depressing, sad, dead, elo <laughs> dead elephants. But um, it was kind of weird. It was polite. You know, a polite mugger. What's that all about? See, what happened was I was walking home, Canary Islands. Um, I'd been working as a bouncer for about like eight months and I was on emergency tax and then all of a sudden they gave me 700 quid so I went, I'm going to the airport. So I got a bus to the airport and I walked in and I says, um, give me a ticket as far away as you can. And the far away as you can they could give me was Canary Island so I says, right, I'll go there then. So after about a week I was um, drinking in Playa del Inglés or somewhere like that. I uh, get a bit, you know, a little bit Irish and drunk. And um, so I was walking home, back to the hotel, on my own. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, didn't see the guy coming from anywhere, bang, right in the side of the head, right? The guy sneaked up behind me, punched me right in the side of the head. Nearly knocked me over, not quite. And I'm like staggering all over the place. At the time I used to wear glasses, now I don't agree with it anymore. So they flicked off my head and went spinning across the ground. So I'm staggering sideways in the same direction and I come back to a rest and I think, oh, I should pick my glasses up. So I go to pick them up. And the guy grabs him out from under me before I get a chance, right? And he's waving the glasses in my face like this. And he goes, money, money, you know? So I've got like 27 euros on me, you know? And I'm standing there looking at him. I'm drunk. I'm a bit confused because he just hit me in the head. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see this other guy, you know? And the guy in front of me is just like this big fat dude, you know? And the other guy, he's like a really skinny guy. I mean, he's even smaller than Rod. It's unreal. He's like he's practically a dwarf. So um, I'm thinking to myself, the little dwarf guy is probably a killer, you know? The big fat guy does all the shouting, and the little dwarf guy is like, no, ninja. So um, I thought, well, about enough. If it was a big guy in his own, I probably would have clocked him. But I thought, well, what the hell? You know what I mean? You get one in the back of the head when you do that. So what I did was, I had 27 euros, and I thought, you know, this guy mugged me. I'm not going to give him all my money. Screw him, fat bastard. So what I did was, I scooped out seven euros and change. And I says, here, take it, take it, you bastard. Take it, take it now, take it, like this. And he just looked so scared, he put his hand out, and I poured the money in his hand, like slapped it into his hand like that. You you know, looking really angry. And all of a sudden, he goes, and he gives me my glasses back in this real polite gesture. You know, he goes, oh, here you go. And I, was, I took it like this, and I was like, I'm about to say thank you. I was about to go, I'm going to tip on my tongue. And I thought, why am I saying thank you to a mugger? You just robbed me of seven pounds, you know? And I thought maybe I said thank you. You might think it was a pushover, and then kind of beat the crap out of me. So um, I didn't say thank you. I just walked off. And I'm getting that wind-up signal again. You know, I talk so fast, but I still seem to take so much time. So anyway, that's the end of my mugging story. If you've got any mugging stories, write them in and tell me. Maybe we could have, like, you know, a support group or something. Anyway, back to uh, the fascist bastard who uh, locked me in this place in the first place. Bye-bye. We do apologise for the B word there. More on that story later. Meanwhile, it's a little bit of movie moments. I'm afraid I've forgotten... I forgot think it's going to work, Barry. You have that squeaky idea, no? Oh, yes. Sister Innocent, but... I'm afraid I've forgot my movie moments hat. So I've had to put on a different hat. It's my movie pirate hat. So did I go see these films in the cinema? Or did I watch them at home? Who knows, it's up to you to decide at home. Some of the films I've seen this week, I'm gonna do it pretty quick, seen Get Smart. We've told uh, Steve Carell from Office USA and Anchorman and that. Quite funny, mild, but quite funny. Um, Anne Hathaway in it, tidy. Pirating. I've also seen The Inedible Hulk. Um, who's a bit of a B brother of Incredible Hulk. The new film, Edward Norton, I think it's quite good. I enjoyed it. It's got a bit of Hulk go smash, like that and stuff like that. And it's got Tim Roth as the bad guy and Liv Tyler as the love interest. Tidy. Mm. Uh, and then uh, just to finish off, uh, Wall E, you know that Pixar animation, little robot cleaning up the earth. Nice. What a bad film, cheeky, mellow. There's no talking in it for the first 40 minutes. It's all bleep, bleep, root, doot, doot, and stuff like that. Brilliantly animated, worth a watch or a download. Beep, 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 beep. So um, that's about it for this little movie moment. We're, gonna, we're really running out of time on this show, although we could go all night until they pulled the power on us. Ching, like that. So the thing is, just to sort of wrap up the show, we, we usually have a bit of emails with Roger and that, but instead today we've got a very high science boffin, uh, very high, um, incredibly so high up there, um, medical advice with Dr. Crumbly Bottom. Take it away, Mr. Bottom. Hello? Hello, I'm Hello, um, I, I'm sorry today because you see, well, I 
I was supposed to be the Samaritan of Isaac. So, <laughs> it's kind of funny, really, because I do not take my own advice. So, anyway, I'll tell you what happened, and then we will do uh, this. This is question for you. I was uh, removing a man's penis in order to do it upon his forehead. He actually did request from this one. Uh, I don't know why, I don't, it doesn't really matter anyway, it's not important. But then uh, I would pull out on YouTube, you know, I put it on the other this big screen in the middle of the penis, you know? It's huge, it's huge. So anyway, I put them, I cut them in the last and then they're going to pretend to me. And it's still, it stabs me right in the eye. Right in the eye, I'm telling you. It's like, oh, it hurts so much! But no, well, it's not okay, but I have to wear the bandage, you know? So, um, I was going to give you some medical advice, but I think the best medical advice I could give you is if you ever want to cut somebody's penis off, wear safety goggles. Yes, now that is a very important point. You must always wear safety goggles whenever you go, especially when masturbating. It is most important. You get that in your eye, it causes an infection, it bleeds, it separates, it's all yellow and disgusting, and it stinks, and your eye swells up and you look like some kind of freaky toad. I don't know. Anyway, so I think what I'll do is just let you know that I have not much to be enjoying all of this today, and I will maybe if they let me out, see you next week. Yes. Very incredible, deep, in-depth stuff there. I picked out sexy goggles. So always wear sexy goggles when toggling downstairs. You never know what you might get in your eye there. So we've got literally a few seconds left on the show. And I'd like to say it's been lovely. I can see why the other lot get power mad up in this position because it's just so great. Look, look. Sorting me there. There's my boundaries. There's my boundaries. Pushing boundaries. We push boundaries on the Tuesday show. Oh, the Tuesday Club. Come join the Tuesday Club. So, uh, that email again. It's Tuesday Show at bview.tv. My spadge slash bview. Facebook. Bview in a search and that, and you'll find us. So, um, I've been Glenn Sutton. You've been watching the Tuesday Show. I'm off back into space and time and see what we can pluck out of the entertainment world for next week. Oh, it's been a corker, but just before I go, a little word of ro for Roger. Um, there's Roger. Hee <laughs> hee uh, Making an appearance on not the original soundtrack of Star Wars there. So he disses Star Wars, but yet he wrote most of the music for it. I tell you, it's probably because they didn't pay him, they paid that other guy. So, it's been great. I'm glad you've all enjoyed it. We have. In fact, tell us if you've enjoyed it, get in touch. It's just time to round the show up like Tim used to back in the day and just say, from me, it's Skabar, from Ben, it's Skibbly Doo, and from everybody in the show, it's Tatty Bye! Till next time. Woo! We've had good fun, sexy time.